In this presentation, we'll go over the basics of using MLA formatting. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to format an essay using MLA style, cite your sources within your essay using in-text citations, and cite your sources at the end of your essay using a works cited page. When writing an essay, especially one that requires research, you are generally required to use a particular documentation style to format your essay and give credit to your sources. Documenting your sources helps your reader find the sources that you use as support, and it adds to your credibility as a writer. There are four main styles each used for particular disciplines. MLA, most commonly used in English and other humanities, APA, used in psychology and social sciences, Chicago, used in history, philosophy, and other humanities, and CSE, used in physical and biological sciences and in mathematics. In this presentation, we'll be focusing on using MLA style, or the Modern Language Association. First, we'll go over the basics of formatting an essay using MLA style. Start with your heading in the upper left-hand corner of the page. Here, you should list your name, your professor's name, your course name and number, and the date. Note that the date format is day, month, year. In the upper right-hand corner of the page, one half inch from the top, you should add your last name, a single space, and the page number. These items should repeat in the header on each page of your essay, numbering each page consecutively. Next, give your essay a creative and original title that reflects your thesis or main idea. Center your title below your heading. Do not italicize the title, use quotation marks around it, or make it bold. Write your essay using a clear font that is easy to read. Double space your paper throughout and do not add any extra spacing before or after your heading or title or between paragraphs. Use one inch margins on the top, bottom, and both sides of your page. Finally, indent the first line of each paragraph by one half inch. In MLA format, your sources should be cited in two ways. First, you should use in-text citations within the text of your essay that include very basic and abbreviated information about your source. Then, you should include full bibliographic entries at the end of your paper in the form of a works cited page. In-text citations are used to cite your sources within the text of your essay and are dependent upon what type of source you are citing. The first item in your in-text citation should always correspond with the first item of your bibliographic entry in your list of works cited at the end of your essay. Typically, an in-text citation for a book or journal article will list the author's last name and the page number referenced. Check out this example. There should be no punctuation before the citation unless the quoted sentence that precedes it ends with a question mark or exclamation mark. Next, you'll use an opening parenthesis followed by the author's last name, a single space, and the page number that you're citing. End with a closing parenthesis and a period. If a source does not have a page number, do not add one to your in-text citation. There are several ways to give credit to your sources using in-text citations within your paper. First, you can paraphrase or summarize the material. In this case, you will need to include both the author's name and the page number in your in-text citation. For example, the Romantics often explored the role of emotion in the creative process, Wordsworth 263. Here, the source material is paraphrased and the author and page number are included in the in-text citation. Next, you can paraphrase or summarize the material while using the author's name within your text. 
In this case, since you've already mentioned the author's name, you only need to include the page number in your in-text citation. For example, Wordsworth extensively explored the role of emotion in the creative process, 263. Here, the author's name is mentioned within the text, so only the page number is included in the in-text citation. You can also quote the material word for word. Use quotation marks around material that is directly quoted word for word from your source. If you don't mention the author's name within your text when quoting material, you will need to include it along with the page number in your in-text citation. For example, romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, Wordsworth 263. Here, the writer uses quotation marks around the material that is quoted word for word from the source. Since the author's name is not mentioned in the text, it's included along with the page number in the in-text citation. Check out this next example. Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, 263. Here, the writer uses a direct quotation, but also mentions the author's name within the text, so only the page number needs to be included in the in-text citation. If you don't know the name of an author, cite the first item in the bibliographic entry for that source in your work cited list instead. In most cases, this will be the title of the source. Use the full title if it's brief. Otherwise, use an abbreviated version of the title. For example, if the full title of an article is The Death Penalty and the Fundamental Right to Life, shorten the title in your in-text citation to The Death Penalty. Punctuate the title according to the type of source. Titles that are typically placed in quotation marks, such as poems, short stories, and articles, should also use quotation marks in the in-text citation, while titles that are typically italicized, such as books, movies, and journals, should also be italicized in the in-text citation. If you're citing two or more works by the same author, you'll need to include both the author's last name and the title of the work, separated by a comma, in your in-text citation. This will help your reader distinguish which work by that author you're referring to in your work cited list. If you cite a work by two authors, include both of the author's last names in your in-text citation, connected by AND. If your source has three or more authors, include only the last name of the first author listed, followed by the Latin phrase et al, which means and others. For more details on how to cite other types of sources using in-text citations, refer to your writing handbook or textbook, check out online sources such as the MLA Style Center or Purdue OWL, or talk with your librarian. End your essay with your Works Cited page, which should be formatted using most of the same features as the rest of your essay. Begin your Works Cited page on a separate page at the end of your essay. Use one-inch margins. Include your last name and the page number in the upper right-hand corner of the page, continuing consecutively from the previous page. Title your page Works Cited if you're citing multiple sources or work cited if you're only citing one source. Do not italicize the title, use quotation marks around it, or make it bold. As with the rest of your essay, you should double space all of your citations. Don't skip any extra space between entries. Indent the second and any subsequent lines of each entry by one half inch to create a hanging indent. Finally, list each entry in alphabetical order according to the first word of the entry. Now we'll talk a little bit about how to create your bibliographic entries for your Works Cited page. As mentioned before, each of your in-text citations will correspond to an entry that lists the bibliographic details of a source in your Works Cited lists. Each entry will include up to nine core elements, the author, the title of the source, the title of the container, other contributors, 
the version, the number, the publisher, the publication date, and the location. Not all entries will include all of these elements. For example, a source may not have other contributors aside from the author. Just skip any elements that don't apply to your source or that aren't available and move on to the next one. Follow each element with the punctuation that is shown in this chart, but be sure to end each entry with a period. Let's look at this example of a works cited entry of a book with one author. To create our entry, we should start with the first element and work our way down. We know that the author's name is Mark Twain. The author's name should be listed as last name, comma, first name. As shown in the chart, this element should end with a period. We also know the title of the source, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. As mentioned before, titles should be punctuated according to the type of source. Book titles are italicized. Since this source is individually published and it's not a part of a larger work, such as an anthology, it doesn't fit into a separate container, so we'll skip that element. It also doesn't have other contributors, such as an editor or illustrator, so we'll skip that too. Additionally, the book isn't published as a particular version or edition, and it's not part of a numbered series, so we can skip those elements too. Next on the list is the publisher, and we can find that information on the publication page. The book was published by Oxford University Press, which we should abbreviate to Oxford UP. As shown in the chart, the publisher should be followed by a comma. We also know the publishing year. This book was published by Oxford in 1999. Finally, since we're citing the entire book, there's no need to include a location, such as a series of page numbers. And since this is the last element we're citing in this entry, we should end with a period. Now, this entry is complete and can be written out in its entirety like this. Twain, comma, Mark, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, period. Oxford UP, comma, 1999, period. Now we'll look at an example that's a little more complicated, a journal article. First, we'll write the author's name, Greg Camfield, written as Camfield, comma, Greg. Remember to follow each element with the punctuation shown in the chart. Next, we'll write the title of the article. Since this is a journal article, we should place the title inside quotation marks. Next up is the title of the container. When the source that you're citing makes up a small part of a larger work, the larger work can be seen as a container that holds your source. In this case, the article is a small part of the academic journal titled 19th Century Literature. Here, the journal 19th Century Literature can be seen as the container for the specific journal article that we're citing because the article was published within the academic journal. Since the journal article doesn't have other contributors or a particular version or edition, we can skip those elements. Since the article is numbered, we should include that information in the number element. Journals are typically numbered by volume and by issue number, written like this. The journal is published by the University of California Press, which should be abbreviated as U of California P. The journal was published in June of 1991. Finally, the article can be found on pages 96 through 113 of this edition of the journal, so include this information in the location slot written like so. Now we have all the information we need to write out the full entry. Now, I know that this is a lot of information to take in, but don't worry. You won't be expected to memorize all these details. After all, there are a lot of different types of sources and different ways to cite each element. When creating your citations, you should always refer back to your handbook or textbook as needed. The purpose of discussing all of these details in this presentation was simply to give you an overview of the basic elements needed in your works cited entries.
Let's review. In this presentation, we discussed how to format an essay using MLA style, how to cite your sources within your essay using in-text citations, and how to cite your sources at the end of your essay using a works cited page. Thanks for watching.